Hi, this is Jonathan. How are you guys doing? Today's video is about when do I use my guitar effects? something from the internet or it says here in the 1930s Rickenbacker made a clunky vibrola Spanish guitar with motorized pulleys that jiggle the bridge to create a vibrato effect that's back in 1930 in the 1940s Diamond uh, manufactured the world's first standalone effect a type of tremolo uh, many guitarists look for a way to reproduce the natural reverb and echo they enjoy during sound check in empty halls. Now, uh, as history will have uh, reminded us, you know, guitar effects uh, was something that guitar players uh, desire as far back as the 1930s. So there's been they have been around for a long, long time. Uh, when I first started uh, playing the electric guitar, there was nothing in fact because all I had was a little first box and I could consider that an effect so I'm going to break down all these effects in in three types one is the organic effect you know, effects such as a tremolo arm a slide these are all organic because it either comes with the guitar or you do something with the guitar the other one is the gain uh, structured effects like you know fuzz, boosters, overdrives, you know, distortion. And then you have the time-based effects, uh, where you're talking about the reverb, the, the delays, and whatever you have, tremolo, choruses, um, chicory phases, you know. Um, and when I first started out, I didn't know nothing about the time-based effects at all. I started knowing a little bit about the gain effects, you know, like the uh, overdrives, for example, and the first. Um, 
know nothing about delays, know nothing about reverb. But yet, I always wondered how the guitar sounds so good uh, in the records, you know, uh, in the in the in the cassettes that I was hearing, the 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 vinyl that I was hearing, and how they sound so good. Uh, always wonder. But in so little as I do understand, I know that there are some effects at play. We just do not know what it is. You know, at the tender age of 16 and 17, you, you know nothing. I, I know nothing at that time. It's when I started um, playing a little bit more uh, with my temporary band, you know. Um, when we were jamming, found out about the reverb knob. Ah, so this is what it does, you know. It just kind of mimics the sound of a big hall. And then I got introduced to delays and you know real cheap delays and chorus effects. And when I started playing in the clubs, I got to know more and more each month, each year. And it was a learning period for me, which I cherish so much because every time I mix around or, or hang around with fellow musicians, I get to learn a little bit more. I found out about <coughs> phases and you know, and flangers and, and stuff like that. And I found out that these effects do come in handy, especially when you're in a small group. And we're talking about a, 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 a group of like a four piece or a three piece, like, you know, a bass, drum, and guitar, and maybe a keyboard. Then maybe a guitar effects will come in handy because they can't fill up the spaces in between. Um, and that was my uh, understanding at the time and still is until today. And as I progressed from a four-piece band to a six-piece band, and we have like you know maybe horn sections and stuff like that, like two keyboard players, then you know you kind of like uh, taper down uh, or, or stop using a whole lot of effects you know, uh, gradually. But in terms of the uh, the recordings that we hear, um, I noticed that a lot of prominent solos are done without much time-based effects. Maybe a little bit of a delay, but we're not talking about um, choruses and flangers and, and, and whatever. Not so uh, much. You know, most of it is just clean, uh, maybe overdriven, but with a whole lot of delay, maybe, but just organic sound, you know, um, organic sounding. Uh, of course, there are um, exceptions. There are a couple of uh, guitar solos that are really heavy uh, in the chorus section or in uh, the univibe, for example, Jimi Hendrix and stuff like that. Effects can be used to enhance a song if you let the effects do its work. But that's provided that you know what you're doing. So the learning curve of an effects pedal, for example, or a individual effects, needs some time to to cultivate, you know. And it's intoxicating because there's a whole lot of effects around in the world. Um, many brands, many types of delays, many types of reverb. The Strymon comes out with this whole bunch of reverb that is totally mind-boggling. But it enhances the song, you know, if used correctly. Now, I've seen groups, I've seen guitarists who um, overuse the effects and the sound becomes really muddied up and you don't even know what he's playing <laughs> because a lot of times, you know, all his playing and everything is being covered up by the effects that he was using. And there are also times when I've seen a guitar player who doesn't use any effects at all, maybe just a slight delay and reverb, and his guitar parts all comes out really, really clear, really, really prominent. So when do you use your guitar effects? Now, for me, I use uh, the organic ones, like for example, the tremolo arm and the uh, slide um, in a melodic way, if I can. So to in, in order to create a atmosphere or a sort of a uh, highway, you know, um, in order to create like a journey uh, within a song, like, you know, I would just hit a slide or the treble arm just to create a different feel to that song. In terms of effects, you know, uh, stuff like choruses, I don't know, um, reverb and delay, I would use them um, sparingly sometimes in rhythm parts, you know, if, if, I, if I feel the need to. Sometimes rhythm parts uh, are accomplished uh, without chorus, just a plain, nice, clean tone with a little bit of a delay, and that's about it. Or uh, sometimes rhythm parts can be done with a tinge of a drive, just a tinge. And if you are playing like funk, you know, fast tempo song, sometimes a you know a, fra a phaser can come in handy, especially with your rhythm uh, strumming parts. You know, it, it's a nice effect. And I I heard all this stuff being done 
um, in the 70s, in the 80s, in as far back as the 90s. Um, when it comes to the the period of 2000s, all these effects started to taper off, and a lot of guitar players started to go really clean without any, you know, um, excessive effects, except for the church. Uh, the worship teams they thrive on the the reverb and the delays. You know, they will use it because of. Uh, Whatever Hill song and, and, and Planet Shakers they used to do, you know, the, the, the worship songs they used to play, they recorded on, these are all like uh, really uh, reverb laden and delay laden to create a atmospheric uh, feel. So it started a, a revival uh, of sorts, you know, but stuff like chorus and flangers and, and phases, they are still, you know, yeah, still in the dormant side, you know, still quiet at this time. Who knows? You know, things do come in a circle. Maybe they'll come around in time. Um, for me, I, I use effects uh, as a way of um, stating what I want to state during that section of the song. Now, if it is a, a, a short melodic solo, I would probably do it uh, without effects. But there will be times when I would put in some effects just to... Uh, have a certain feel to it. So it's all about feel. It's all about how you want your solo to be interpreted, how you want your audience to listen, how you want your audience to to um, to understand what your solo is about. So it's all about you and the painting in front of you, this blank canvas in front of you. This is what I, I, I always... Uh, this is how I explain to my, to my students. Like, you know, when, when you are doing a session, for example, you are presented with a, a sort of a blank canvas of sorts. There's there's outline, but you need to put colors into it. So the effects, the chorus, how do you place the guitars? These are all like, you know, where do you place your colors? You know, where do you place your, your clouds or your mountain silhouette? You know, how where do you put your sun, your grass? So, you know, what do you do your rhythm parts? Do you double track it? Do you single track it? Do you have stereo effects? What sort of effects do you use? So this is like, you know, um, I, I call it um, crafting uh, your scenario in, in a musical sense. So you craft whatever that is needed for that song. The part of being a session player is to put what you have on the table and not to take anything away. Your creativeness and your imagination plays a major part because uh, your experiences, your melodic sense, and what you feel uh, needs to be put into that section of the song is so vital. So, um, yeah, maybe this video will help you kind of sit back and think of the effects that you need and the effects that you don't need. Sometimes all you need is a good guitar and a good amp, and that's all you need. Um, I remember who was saying this, um, Eddie Van Halen. He didn't have money to buy any effects, so all he did was his guitar, directly to a Marshall amp and any effects that he, he, he does with his guitar is all manipulated by hand and fingers and our necessity you know all this stuff comes out and that is Van Halen Eddie Van Halen's style of playing so sometimes we all uh, are too um, gung-ho about getting effects and we'll buy a whole ton of effects now I've been there done that you know I bought a whole lot of effects I threw away a whole lot sold away a whole lot nowadays I have the effects that I need and that's all. I'm not gonna buy a lot more. And probably I'm spoiled in many in many ways because I have my Helix native, which presents me with a whole bunch of effects at the touch of a fingertip and a mouse. But um, nothing beats the you know the pedal effects through an amp and that's something that I, I desire uh, in in this season, you know, of my playing. Something to consider. So uh, don't go spending your money needlessly on effects that you don't really need. Sit down, take a while, breathe in, and decide which effects do I need. And sometimes you just might not need anything at all. You know, just need some more time practicing the guitar. Now, when it comes to the, uh, the gain-based uh, effects, you know, if you have a good amp, you don't really need all the distortion or the overdrive pedals. You know, you could just head on to the dirty channel and you're done. If you do not have a a, a, a great amp, you know, a, a, a heavy amp like you know this, then you probably need an overdrive pedal, and that will help you in getting the sound that you want. Um, there's so many in the market, so take your time to choose one that will suit your style of play, right? 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, press that bell for notification of future videos that follow. Be part of Patreon to support this channel. I would appreciate it. I thank all my patrons for the wonderful love and support. Thank you so much, guys. So in the meantime, take care of yourself and continue that journey of yours in, in getting to know the electric guitar. Stay safe and God bless. Ciao.